I am Peter Wong, and I'd like to put my balls in my immigrant jam. God, uh, yes, you did just hear that. Yes, I heard it too. But first and foremost, hello and welcome back to Immigrant Jam, the podcast, the loveliest of podcasts in all the lands. I'm your host, Lucy Paul. We are back with another beautiful, delicious, and nutritious, as you just heard, episode featuring the one and only comedian, funny man, man extraordinaire, man about town, <laughs> Peter Wong. Peter Wong. <laughs> Welcome. Hey. Welcome to Immigrant Jam, the podcast. And you must elaborate on why you would put your balls into your Immigrant Jam and what it would taste like. I would. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I imagine it doesn't taste good, but uh, oh. um, I didn't know what else to say. I think I default to, to crudeness. Uh huh. Um, and it's my defense mechanism. Wow. Okay. We're going to unpack that. Okay. Yeah, please. Where do you think that started, Peter Wong? Uh, when do you think you started using balls to get yourself out of vulnerable situations? <laughs> I don't know. I've always been a, I don't know, is the word ex exhibitionist? I've always, I mean, not like in the sense of like everyone look at me naked. It's, I'm so free or whatever. But uh, I always like to, even in school, I was known for like, um, <laughs> this is a lot. No, <laughs> I just realized this is a lot no, to talk to tell you. We I don't know each this. other that well. Well, Lucy. well we're about well, now we do. Um, so. so even in school, you were known for you have to complete the sentence because otherwise people are going to fill it in in their heads. And I mean, whatever you know. they fill in can't be any worse. I'm than picturing what I'm saying. you flashing people with a trench coat. Oh, no, no, being no. Like it's Peter Long. Blah. No, I no, I didn't wear trench coats. Um, in in like in elementary school, I would like. Uh, I remember one time I like took my my penis out and then um like under the desk i told everyone in the class to look at it while the teacher was like teaching nice and people looked and then they were giggling and telling other friends like hey look what peter's doing and i look at, and then i had to like ramp it up so i started like peeing under the desk and uh Whoa. eventually the teacher saw it and he wasn't like he wasn't mad. He was just like concerned that I like just uh, didn't know how to didn't do it in his mouth. <laughs> didn't, um, didn't know how to like potty or whatever. And then uh, so he got like uh, it became like a concerning thing for them. They got people escorted me to the bathroom. Was like, are you okay? You know, go ahead. Um, and yeah, I just from that point on, I guess every I, I thought I think it's very funny to. And little show did people. did they know that it was just performative. And now you. Sort That's of also closer. take your. <laughs> <laughs> now you also take your dick out, but like metaphorically, because you do comedy. That's like taking your dick out in front Is of it? people in a way. Please tell me, uh, explain, explain what you mean by that. Well, because you're up there and it's you and you don't have any anything else but you and your thoughts and the things that you thought were funny before mm -hmm. getting up there. And so you're very, very vulnerable in a way. You're mm -hmm. getting naked in front of people. A lot of times you're letting them into your, or not a lot of times, most of the time you're letting them into your brain, whatever that means, you know, whether that means that all you think about is sex or that you fucking think apps in abstract weird ways or whatever but you're letting them in that's i buy that i buy that there's a, there yeah metaphorically yeah. yeah you ever see like uh off off broadway shows um like <laughs> yes. plays that were just written and stuff and like a lot of them have they just take off their clothes yeah because you know to them because it works like, this is the this is the character finally being fully vulnerable and so it's time to just do that yeah, and We're, I always can get past that. There's a guy with his fucking dick out on stage. <laughs> I can't get past it either. Yeah, yeah. but um, you know, I'm German, yes. and people in Germany love to take their clothes off in public. Is that true? Oh yes. You don't you don't know this? No, I didn't. Oh yeah, uh, Germans are huge like uh, nudists. It, and it's not in the sense of like, look at it, ha ha ha. It's oh, like, no. oh, this is beautiful or this is mm, normal. I don't know about beautiful, but <laughs> <laughs> but like this is our right yeah. to do this. Uh huh. And so like if you go to a lake in the summer, like yeah. in Berlin, like there'll be just like balls flying around everywhere yeah. and not like manicured, nice balls or or nasty ones nasty ones long ones hairy ones what about the women also 
Yes. Yeah. Many, many German pussies. Yeah. 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 Nice. So, um, so yeah, Germans love that. And like the, in, in Germany, saunas are like, you're not allowed to wear. Wear clothes. Clothes. They're yeah. like textile free zones. Right. Right. Well, yeah, that feels normal. to do it. Right. Does I, it? I feel like here people wear like You walk in a, a sauna bikini. with like a, oh, like a swimsuit. Like a mixed sauna, like a co-ed sauna. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Germany, guys, if it's just guys still, yes. it'll, it'll be. Right. Yeah. But mix is like, yeah. so I guess, you know, maybe there's just. This is like Europe is like a little more healthier on like, uh, you know, seeing that's women true naked and that's guys. true. It's true. Like at the beach, it's funny because when I'm at the beach in Europe, I'll take my top off, but here I don't. Right. Although I can. You could. It just feels it's just weird. So, yeah, it, yeah. You, people will look at you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Do you want to take off your top? Yeah, because I don't want tan lines. Oh yeah. Yeah. But now it's you know tan lines are like becoming like cool. You know what says yeah. who. This is not true. It's true. I really? saw it. According I to mean, what? You, TikTok? You can't, if you make me. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know this? Who told you if this? If you made me uh, uh, prove it in a court of law, I have nothing. <laughs> this, this, everything you say here is legally binding, Peter Wong. Didn't you know that? Yeah. But wow. I, I, I remember hearing, um, <laughs> I hope it wasn't in a porn. <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember where I got it from. But I hear like, like, Tan, the, like tan lines, you know, they is like are nice. They're like nice now, and I like I, yeah, tan lines are nice. You like tan lines? That's such a weird thing to like. Yeah. What what just... what do you like about it? I don't know if I have the intellectual vocabulary <laughs> <laughs> to tell you why. It's a feeling just... that I get from tan lines that I can't describe. <laughs> oh my god! What I did not know this well, was a thing. Let me, let me I guess try. There's a fetish for everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fetish is such a strong word for it. I like tan lines. Okay, it's like saying try. I like brunettes and then or blondes and being like, that's a fetish. Um, <laughs> but uh, I guess I guess there's just I guess things that uh, attach itself to uh, uh, to normalness and and imperfection uh, mm. is 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 at least for me becoming more and more uh, sexy. You Ooh, know, so I love like, that. You know, it's now even that's like great. a little bit of. Like some ch chubbiness or like a scar or things like that. Those are, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the way you say that, like as if you're like order, you're like, yes, I'd like one with uh, a lot of tan lines, sunburn. I take a sunburn. Sunburn, yeah, a little disfigurement. Um, a scar, you know, like a real nice like slashing across the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you grew up in New York, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, there you go. That's the answer. That, there You're you like, go. A rat hanging off uh, her earlobe? Yeah. I'll take that too. Um, and yeah. some roaches crawling through her <laughs> <laughs> No, but I'm sorry. I'm like making fun of this actually really beautiful sentiment that you just expressed, which I really love. Yeah. And, good save. Um, hmm? it's a good save. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, that's awesome. Uh, is that something that's come with maturity? Or have you the always been like tan that? Tan lines or the imperfection <laughs> thing? Well, I'm, just, I'm really trying to. Sorry, no, the imperfection say things. The imperfection thing. thing. I think it's more. Uh, it probably laid dormant when uh -huh. I was younger, uh -huh. but now it's. Uh, you know, when I just. Yeah, I'm seeing that more, and uh, and yeah, maybe it's just something that I. I think I know what I like more now. Mm. But also, isn't it also that like we're we live in a time now where everybody is so perf like perfect looking uh, because people get so much plastic surgery and fillers and botox and and makeup is such a huge thing now people know how to contour or women know how to contour their faces and yeah. look totally different maybe that's also why you're yeah. swimming against the tide right yeah. i'm uh, heavily against um uh, plastic surgery i think it's it's like i am too actually are you although i am a person Principally. Huh? Like principle on principle well, not, well, or moral? I, I, I think everybody should do whatever they want, right? Yeah. That, that being said, though, I think that, you know, there is a lot to be said <laughs> for accepting yourself the way you are and, <clears throat> um, and also not making yourself look like everybody else like a, a which is a beauty standard right that's right, what that right. means so i'm kind of for myself i could never do it um but uh except if it's free and uh, someone wants favor no i'm kidding <laughs> um but of course i don't think you know i'm not like judging people who get it i just think that I now am. it's like a time you are 
I am a little bit. I think like that how? Like, like what do you? you think I feel there? like I mean that's such a like it's such a uh, it's such a like a hard. Um, you're speeding into like you're you're diving really deep into uh, perpetuating just shallowness mm. when you when you do it, especially you're putting money and in, into it as well, and and so I think for you to to put that meant that that much thought and then effort into doing that it, it, it must mean that you don't have a sp like a confidence in like in 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 that there's so, something deeper that you can offer or you know something something else and plus uh i think it's also like doesn't i i'm, I'm also being a little shallow as well here because i think the long-term effect of of it looks worse i agree overall than yeah. if you never i agree especially like older women like i've never seen like a 70 year old woman with plastic surgery and been like oh my god i i bet she's 30. yes you're just yeah, like yeah. oh okay that's a 70 year old yeah. woman that doesn't have wrinkles Has her face stretched but she taut. still looks her age uh, yes. right yeah and I there's mean, also, guess... also oh, there's a sadness like yeah, i see there's a sadness true. when i see the the frozen in time faces mm -hmm. it just seems like this this um i don't know an acceptance of the yeah you know, i mean the people that are for it or 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 people would argue against it that you know it can change somebody's life because they've <clears throat> always been made fun of for having a big nose or sure. you know what i mean or whatever it is right. um and then they get the plastic surgery done and they find the self-confidence that they've been lacking so i guess there's that but i agree that it's i'll break that down slope. too into two parts which okay. is that the people who feel uh they're um I'm scared of where I'm going right now. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll make it. You'll, you'll write soon. the ship yeah, if yeah. I get there. <laughs> if I get there, right? Okay. So uh, there's the subjective uh, uh, standards that we have of beauty. We have our feelings of, you know, what's attractive, what's not. And then there's this kind of like um, almost global consensus or societal consensus on what's, on who's attractive or not. And it seems like there's a lot of societally att attractive people that choose to get plastic surgery mm -hmm. and then there's people who are just on who are society societally unattractive who decide to get plastic surgery i put more respect in people who feel that they're that 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 fall under that category mm -hmm. that get it it's like you're almost trying to catch up right to the game okay yeah. i can kind of buy that then there's the people that are like eights that are like <laughs> <laughs> that they try to just skyrocket past mm -hmm. everyone else i feel like that's just another level of selfishness that just is unbelievable <laughs> give you know? everybody else a chance here what the fuck that's it that's yeah. so that's my feeling on it that in the, <laughs> overall against it but in that realm i'm more for the people who are trying to catch up than the people who right are like i need to be even prettier and right all that. but here's it's the so segue bad. into the immigrant jam oh, is it al also a cultural thing because for me, I was born in Germany and my mom's Romanian, my dad's German, and I feel like Europe is still a little bit like calmer mm -hmm. when it comes to the plastic surgery and and all great. that body altering, the body altering culture, which now here in the States is like like twenty year olds are doing it, are like getting right. botox well that's because you have like scandinavian like models or like swedish like just what people in europe? Are just born just like uh -huh. incredible but like in genes. europe people don't like sh like women notoriously or in, in germany notoriously don't shave their armpits for example a lot oh, of them okay. you know and yeah. my, i grew up with a mom who never wore makeup i had to teach my mom how to put on makeup what is why why is that is there is that a feminist thing or is that some other thing i think it's a cultural thing it's it's a um because china's similar and i'll, I'll talk right, about that in a exactly bit. that's why i'm asking because i imagine it is well first of all i think that you know my mom is from romania which is which was socialist after she was born and then she grew up in east germany after she was a teenager when they moved there and i think that uh generation also of people that you know were very political and yes maybe also feminist but you know makeup and jewelry that was like for the bourgeoisie kind of yeah. you know that was for she, like, like working class rich people kind of... uh yeah i mean wow. uh in 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 socialist countries you know everybody's kind of working class <laughs> okay <laughs> in a yeah. way right like yeah. her, her parents were 
professors, but they didn't have any money. Uh -huh. um, and you know, the music that they listened to and in East Germany, they weren't even allowed to wear Levi's, like anything Western was forbidden, mm -hmm. you know, so um, makeup and all of that just wasn't part of their cult, like culture or, or what they believed in, sort of that, yeah. Did that play into like, I guess, her personality? I mean, because what I'm picturing is a very no like, non-feminine, kind of a person no she's very feminine oh yeah yeah she's right. very feminine yeah she just never wore makeup and no jewelry mm -hmm. but um but she's very feminine i think that uh i think see that's also interesting because that's kind of i guess we equate makeup and jewelry with that making you feminine i yeah. guess yeah <clears throat> and especially in this country i think in europe it's different it's not as you know heavily um yeah, this like, I guess, I guess it's also because the culture is so different in terms of like humility. America is very like outward and, and boast like boisterous, boisterous right? and, and confident and confident exactly. And, and sort of leading with all your accolades is the thing to do here. And then yeah. that's not something that's very European. Yeah. Nor is it very Asian. Right. Yeah, so it's shocking. So tell us. So first of all, we haven't even gotten into it. Um, where were you born? Uh, born in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah. My parents, uh, I believe, lived in Hong Kong at the time, but they're from uh, a place called Wenzhou, China. And then um, I was born in a Hong Kong hospital, and we left uh, when I was one. And then, uh, so my first memory is actually in, in uh, New York City, mm. in Queens. Um, and that's all I, I've known is... Uh, is America more or less Queens, New York, America, um, and yeah, that's where I was born. Answers that. And you're you're, but you grew up speaking Chinese. Yeah. Yeah, and your parents, uh, I'm I'm guessing, raised you in with the Chinese culture. Yeah. Um, so yes, because they they can't help but be. Chinese, right. so I, they gotta be. You know, they're all Chinese and and shit. You know, um, <laughs> they just can't stop. Stop being Chinese already, Dad. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I, they they taught me Chinese, um, and yeah, they had, but they're not very like. There's not a lot of cultural or traditions that they do. Mm. Um, there's just the kind of there's a very there's it's just key ones every year. So like Chinese New Year is a big one that's where you kind of get together with family and you guys exchange red envelopes and red envelopes have money in them and they're supposed to signify uh fortune um and uh <clears throat> that's what we held on to i guess the food is that as well and then i guess the 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 morals or the the culture of it that i guess they try to instill in me and there's probably a some of that in me but for the most part that's once i kind of was exposed to American culture. That stuff was just kind of clashed. Yeah, and, you started uh, peeing in in the classroom. That's when, yeah. I mean, I'm guessing that doesn't that's fall not a very Chinese, Chinese morals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Son, as Chinese people, we must pull out our penises and pee in every classroom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would say that might not even be American. <laughs> it might be just a mental that's illness. That's an immigrant thing. That's, that's just a, an immigrant <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's a, yeah. yeah, so you you know. Yes, 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 yes. I actually um, got up on a table once when I was six and pulled my pants down in a restaurant and told everybody that I had a fat vagina. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Luckily, my parents are like. Was this in actor. German? Yes, this was in German. Yeah, and there was like all these like actor friends of theirs. My dad's an actor and a writer. My mom's also an artist. So that's lucky because everybody was like, "This is awesome. This <laughs> child is gonna be a, a genius. <laughs> like this is the best ever." So nobody thought I was a weird. Flat vagina. Fat. Oh, a fat vagina. No, not flat. That would make more sense as a kid being wondering why it's flat. And nothing <laughs> is there. Yeah. But I thought I, I was like, I, and I remember. Were you proud? Being, no, I was mad. You I was mad. mad. I was obsessed and mad about the fact that I had a fat vagina. <laughs> I was a kid. Okay, everybody relax. Well, that's like a Freudian, right? Like, isn't Freud is says women or girls grow up ashamed or of penis envy? 
that they 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 want a penis. Yes. Uh, yes, I wanted a penis. Well, I was like a boy. I was a tomboy for sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Ah, interesting. Wow. Thank you. You're the first person to ever ever analyze that and not just go. <laughs> nice. Thank you for sharing well, that I feel story. Like we're we're uh, what do they say? Birds of the same flock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so we've done some. God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I don't know if that stuck. You know. I, yeah. So I guess that, that didn't stick with you. You didn't continue thinking continue of a vagina. No. Vagina or or similar acts. Did you continue being like? I mean, I have impulses well, like that, but I don't follow through do? on them. To get up and pull my pants down and yell things, yes. Really? I think so. Don't you ever look at a cactus and just want to grab it? <laughs> but you're like, I can't do that. That's what I you say. I, I was in Arizona at the uh, just this week. It's my first time seeing cacti. Isn't it amazing? And they're really awesome. They're so. I think I was a cactus in my previous life. I'm not even kidding. Okay. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Also, no one can prove me wrong. So yeah, I know that's the convenient thing about previous <laughs> lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. But when I went to Arizona, I had I was very I I was like these are my people, the cactus people. I, I I was I'm like I'm not even uh, like doing a bit. Like I was sincerely um, w uh, fascinated by yeah. cactuses, how big they get, yes, and how how kind of pretty they are. But they also aren't like your traditional forms of beauty like right. in a sense they're not a tree or flowers or stuff yeah they're just these things requiring very little su sustenance other than i guess the sun yeah um and, and they're just, majestic you know, they have this majestic quality right where they, they like Standing tower tall, yeah and they're and just postures, like you know mysterious yeah and they hold so much history they've seen so much mm -hmm. with their blind eyes <laughs> yeah um so what are some like chinese morals that <clears throat> Um, I would say hard uh, hard work beyond everything. Right. Um, uh, so not standing out actually is a is a big one. Like being really quiet. Um, being very afraid of women, I think is like, really. Yeah. Like oh, it, I've not heard that one. I, I don't know. Like uh, that's my, me putting a hyperbole on it. But this thing of like flirting, it's uh, that's not in in Asian or Chinese culture mm -hmm. at all. So um, how do you signal? that you like someone or how does how does that in like how does that work then? you know like uh, gay shit uh, <laughs> flowers <laughs> no, okay. I don't, I, okay. I, you're, right. you're you're that's a great question because I'm not I'm, I'm not as tapped into the right of course the you, culture you that up here. yeah but um, <clears throat> I almost think that like <clears throat> it's almost like I don't even think <clears throat> the guy makes the gestures that much. Mm. I feel like it's like he's supposed to just be around and then she sees him and then they kind of just, it's like this hanging out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe I'm wrong, you know, because there's this whole like, and I'm starting to think about like these bubble tea dates <laughs> or whatever that I'm seeing on YouTube or, or and <laughs> So there, it starts somewhere where it's like you want to go get yeah, bubble tea or, or stuff. But right. But that's where the makeup and plastic surgery ties in with the not standing out, right? That that's not so common. What do you mean? That that it's not such a cultural thing. You were saying earlier um, for in China to um, to get plastic surgery or to to kind of, because that would be like in a way standing out, well, right? I I, I guess. Um... When you had said that, what had kind of triggered the, the I guess, the con the connective tissue to me was the, the mom kind of being resistant to mm. certain feminine um, things, mm -hmm. right? So I, that may have been a misread on me. But like uh, like a lot of China, a lot of um, especially, and my history is really bad, but a, a lot during the communist revolution or all that stuff, there was a lot of um, women and men kind of, both being in the working, just working together, mm. um, and it, and it was a very sexless right. kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. There wasn't like this. There wasn't a lot of. There were still male roles and female roles, right. but you both worked. You both freaking did yep. manual labor and all that stuff. Um, it wasn't like a, just a man bringing home bread and right, right, right. just just being a housewife. Um, but on the topic of, I guess makeup and surgery, I. I guess I don't know much of of that anymore. Um, I know in Korea, plastic surgery is in in insane right. kind of uh, like kind of boom. 
Um, and I wonder where, where China is on that. I don't think not as not as much, but there is a, there are people that get the eye surgery to right. like and the and I read about the um, the surgery to make you taller, where they break your knees. Did you read insane. about this? And they put these like um, graft. I don't know these things to like like stretch yeah. your your bones, and then you just lie there for like three months, and That's... a lot of times they <laughs> fuck it up. So then like people have like uneven legs yeah it's so awful it's so awful it's so awful it's so awful it's but so in the article stupid. that i read it said like women actually say that their chance their chances of getting a job go up by like i don't know 50 percent if they're like three inches taller wow that's so tragic. crazy that is so tragic <laughs> yeah. yeah but you grew up here and um you grew up undocumented that's correct. Yeah. I grew up undocumented and I didn't know I was undocumented until high school. Wow. So how did you find out? I found out because I tried to get a job at Dunkin' Donuts and I was 14 and I needed to get working papers. So I asked my mom for where are the working papers? I need to get those. <clears throat> I need I need a birth certificate, all that stuff. And then she's like, well, you are not getting any of that. Uh, you're, uh, you know, undoc you're, you're an illegal immigrant and here's everything. Da -da -da -da. She basically explained it all to me. And uh, <clears throat> it was almost like poetic because I had been um, – there's a Mexican in my class named Alejandro who – we would all joke that he's an illegal immigrant. That was like the kids m being mean kind of mm -hmm. joke that we all make. And I didn't – I wasn't any – I was I was always part of making fun of him and stuff. And uh, yeah, he's a citizen, a U.S. citizen, <laughs> <laughs> and Shit. I'm illegal. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, around when, uh, now I have DACA, which, mm -hmm. uh, when Obama came in, kind of provided this dreamer act thing. And now it's, there's just been, it's been like cycles of like, it looks like things are going to look good or it looks like it's going to get, um, canceled or whatever, you know, right now it's up in the air. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, it, it's, it, what, what's interesting is that, that that's been a big part of my life in the sense of like where I can uh, where I where I can't travel to, right? But I don't have a huge like wanderlust, so it's not been like um, a big thing. I never, I don't think I would have really bothered going to the other countries anyways, just because of my focus mm -hmm. in comedy and stuff. Um, and then it was a big part as far as like not being able to get a job. But right. once the DACA thing came in, I was able to get a job. Um, <clears throat> and uh, besides that, I it it's uh it's just this thing that comes up every year or two when I have to renew it uh, uh but um it isn't i feel like it's also at the same time not like a um a massive a part of my identity mm, right either, but know? it must be a lot of anxiety if if you know when the governments change and one guy says he's gonna get rid of it and then you yes. or what you're describing it looks good it doesn't look good there's some anxiety right that you must there feel is. about it um i had and i don't know why but uh for some reason i had an order of deportation put against me put on me uh sometime in 20 uh before daca actually i had that on me and then daca passed and then i was that uh, daca also prevents you from being deported right mm. and then around 20 15 um right before the next election there was a court hearing that i had um to to get rid to dismiss the case mm -hmm. of the deportation and i remember going there with the immigration lawyer and then um they're kind of talking and then the prosecutor is there and then um they're talking about dismissing it and then they go well i don't know if we want to dismiss it because you know, we don't know what the next next guy's gonna you know like the next president might want to do as far as docking and immigration goes <clears throat> and i didn't really understand it in my head i was like oh, there's the best time to dismiss it because yeah, once right. he comes in you know uh, with what he's saying it seems like it's over for us um and then uh it ended up being something called administratively closed mm -hmm. which means it's like still there but it's you know it could be opened up anytime in the future so it's so that's currently my status right now is i had it i was supposed to be deported but um it was it's been clo it closed and deported for no reason at all you've never like been to jail you've never there's no reason right that right there... there's no reason there i mean so they just it's just a random selection um i don't think it's a random selection uh my parents uh work in uh uh 
handbag they sell handbags and mm -hmm. stuff and at some point they 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 were selling like counterfeit handbags mm -hmm. and then that they got in trouble for that mm -hmm. and i think that may have trickled down okay. to me i think that's i never really we don't me and my parents don't really talk about serious things mm -hmm. ever um not that we're jokey or anything but stuff that gets like uh, uh, uh intense that it, it doesn't really come up mm -hmm. um so all i can do is just put together the context clues and i think that's that's what it is is uh they were you know arrested at some point because of something mm -hmm. and then um we all were involved in probably having to be, to be deported or something like that and the, they would send you to hong kong or to yeah. china yeah it'd be hong kong and you've never been there basically since you were one not not um cognitively basically in a way. it would yeah. be a foreign country to be <laughs> does it make you angry um i was because angry at like, my parents as american one. as anybody else yeah yeah i think i'm pretty um it's hard to i don't i'm a pretty uh i don't know apathetic person overall i it's hard to kind of get me really especially things I can't control. Mm. I don't get stirred up too much. Mm -hmm. um, it's so big. Like the whole thing is so uh, insurmountably big and uncontrollable mm -hmm. that I don't, I, 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 I'm, I guess I'm lucky in the sense that I don't need to dwell at all on it. Well, sometimes to a, to a fault because when I first had to apply for a doc, I didn't care. I was just like, oh, we're fine. Like I just drag my feet along it. And if it wasn't for the immigration lawyer kind of like doing most of the legwork, you know, I don't know if all the things would have done been done right and in time. Um, <clears throat> so similarly with like this stuff, I'm like, I don't want to be deported. I don't want to go there at all. I think I was even like very fatalistic about it. Sometimes I was like, all right, if they deport me there, I'm going to kill myself. Like I was Holy like, shit. what am I, what am I going to do there? Right. I think that's just dramatic. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but it expresses the like severity of what it would mean. It yes. expresses something, right? It's the last place yeah. I want to be. I right, don't want to fucking leave America, right? Yeah. It's um, your home, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's just uh, the the you it, you leave it to the powers that be, mm. and I just it it does it doesn't you know bother me enough. But also at the time I I was. Um, heavily addicted to to video games mm -hmm. um and you know if you wanted to be super psychoanalytical and maybe dig down deep enough and that's like maybe the constant escape of mm -hmm. it to not have to deal with any real world thing ever i was mm -hmm. very averse to stress i always avoided stress mm -hmm. and at any point so <clears throat> um yeah that, that 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 stuff never was a thing that uh that i never sat down and went oh damn it this they've got to fix this mm -hmm. I, I would never get into arguments about people about it, it doesn't it never like seemed uh, like it mattered, mm -hmm. or or there never seemed to be any reason to. Just mm -hmm. this this thing that things happening. Um, hopefully it gets fixed, or hopefully things turn out well. But in the meantime, here I am, and uh, you know, make the best of it. So, what's your like? Op what are your opportunities to become an, an, a citizen now, or what are what's the like path? Is My, there a path? There is, and not if it. Uh, I'll say DACA itself. There's no path. Um, that's what they're trying to figure out. That's what I think Biden kind of lightly promised. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> lightly promised. I yeah. love that. <laughs> right. I say, and that's what As, all like any... politicians when they promise something. Yes. And I don't have promise. a animus towards uh, yeah. any president that promises something and then that doesn't come through because the red tape in government I, like it's it's not as simple as promising of they course. go there and then oh it turns out they lied the whole time yeah. i'm sure has presidents make their promise and once they get into office there's this whole like unbelievable bureaucratic whatever stuff but uh the the uh there is no direct path um but my my dad just recently got uh, his green card mm. and so now there's a path uh, it's like a seven year wait. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm currently in the process of a seven, seven year wait, just starting this year. Um, oh and so in, in seven years, I should have a green card, but I could also getting married would be a, would be a path as right, well. Right. That's true. Yeah. Which is also in, insane if you think about it, mm -hmm. that you have to marry an American citizen to become a citizen of the country that you've been basically a citizen of your whole life yeah yeah it doesn't it's really odd the only thing that i'm american all except the paperwork in, right. in how i feel yeah and you were angry at your parents for not telling you but they didn't tell you to protect you i'm guessing or 
just no, I mean, they don't you know, communicate. The way anger manifests is really logical. I mean, and I was angry at them for bringing me over, like, uh -huh. and then just kind of bringing me over one year, like, late. Right. And just, like, um, putting me in a predicament that was kind of difficult in, right. in a way. Yeah. Um, and that's only because they, they're, they you know, I my mom also, she can be very emotionally, um, I don't know if the word's abusive, but just, like, just, we would get in fights, mm. and then she, she likes to bring up things to hurt people in fights and so i would just that was my attempt too was to grab onto something probably uncontrollable or mm. whatever and then use that as well and so uh so yeah i i had a lot of that kind of anger of like um because you know the all uh the, the, they worked in flea markets growing up that involved selling handbags and um they would make me come along and work for them so there goes all my weekends and my summers and my vacations uh in, when i was in school mm. and go out to work like a 14 to 16 hour a day out in the heat or the cold uh selling, from what age on would you do that like 10 mm -hmm. like from 10 mm -hmm. all the way to like college and so uh, i hated it so much that i wanted to get my own job Mm. Um, that would give me an excuse to not have to go do that. Right. And then, you know, uh, then I, and then maybe in the long run, just move out or all that stuff. But I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even get a job to get out of this awful thing in my head, this system. Um, so then, you know, that, that, that's where the, the anger came from of mm -hmm. like, I want to not have to be supported by you guys, but there's this, this whole bullshit. That, right. That's involved. Yeah. You know? And also maybe looking at all of that, that's also a reason why you're you are adverse to stress or as you say, apathetic about some things because that was like a survival mechanism, right? If you were constantly in crisis, you wouldn't have survived. Yeah. What do in you mean? a way, survived. Like, I mean physically you would have survived, but not mentally. We mean like so the stress caused from 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 something else I guess. if you're working a job you hate yeah and or working at a full stop let's just say working at yeah. 10 years old right where yeah. you want to be a kid or and doing something you hate and and um and constantly having to deal with this like conflicting emotion of of course wanting to help your parents yeah. you know and and the whatever guilt you feel for them having to work so hard whatever i think that you then put your feelings to the side in order to get through it because if you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to get through it yeah uh, i think that's like that's, that's a true. common thing also you might with... be giving me more credit than i deserve no I, I, <laughs> I, maybe i don't know i was very open about how much i hated it i hated it but you were I saying made... that you're now so, or that you're like apathetic or or adverse yeah. to stress with the daca thing that it's not something that you know i Correct. feel like the ability to do that comes from this like survival mechanism of like all right you just get through things yeah you know yeah and you don't have time to really stop and sit there and be like oh my god this i'm so angry or i'm so hurt about the fact that this country is doing this to me you just kind of like right get through it i guess yeah you know get through I mean? it that's one I, I i do see what you mean i yeah. think that's 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 one thing that and there's but there is also almost it's a power it's a powerlessness at the same time of like mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what i can do to kind of right. further the the, the thing right um other than the protest or whatever like mm -hmm. or do you do that protests. do you go to those no i don't no. <laughs> i don't because i remember there was one protest on a sunday mm -hmm. i was like i i'm gonna watch football <laughs> <laughs> hey you know what i i get it i do because it already is like fucked with your life enough right yeah, like at yeah. least you want to fucking watch football on a sunday <laughs> yeah 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 if i'm gonna get supported let me get a couple more of these <laughs> You know, it's like a last meal almost in a way. Did you always talk about it openly or is that like uh, a newer thing? I think I talked about it openly in college. I, my parents were always like, do not tell us to anybody. Right, because yeah. Because we'll get, you know. And then I always thought that that was a little bit of a stretch to think that me saying it to, to in a high school room or like to people and then that somehow they go and talk to someone else and they, the INS gets called and then the INS takes the effort to do something mm. about it. It all seemed kind of um, crazy. 
So uh, I was, I've been pretty open about it. I think um, on stage, I, I, I have a joke about it, um, and I would have more of it if there was more. It was more funny stuff to to grab from it. Mm. Um, uh, so yeah, I. Uh, so I, I uh, Biden, thinking, oh. can you make a DACA funnier, please? <laughs> At least that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense. Um, and how do your parents feel about you doing comedy? They hate it. They think it's a waste of time. Mm. Um, and I think I've. I, 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 there was a part, uh, there was a part of my life or, or a, mo a time in my life where I wanted them to kind of understand and get on board, but that, that was a quickly dissipated, uh, want of them. Um, and maybe through therapy, that's kind of helped me through like, out of like whatever that is. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they don't care for it. And, uh, yeah, then, uh, I've, I also don't no longer want them to, to, to care for it mm -hmm. anymore. Um, but yeah, so they, they think that the pragmatic way is the way to, to go. It's a very immigrant thing and it's yeah. understandable. They came and, you know, worked very hard to get what they have. Um, so yeah, they're waiting for me to like give this up and go back and help with the handbag business, you know? Ain't no fucking way I'm doing that. Hey, they'll see when you uh, make it, they can sell the handbags at your shows. They can be merch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your I mean, merch. With a little punchline on the, on the <laughs> Yeah, front. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you can be like, listen, guys, here, here you go. You can sell the handbags here. Yeah. It's come yeah. full circle. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff that, I mean, I, I remember when we moved here, um, my parents were like, you can't get arrested because we'll get deported. We had visas and stuff, but still. Mm. I remember just always having this fear of getting deported mm -hmm. um, just because we knew we weren't, we didn't have green cards or weren't citizens. Uh -huh. um, and I and I only became a citizen last year, although I was eight when we moved here. All right, congratulations. Thank you, um, because my parents just didn't bother mm -hmm. getting green cards and still kind of it whatever it's a mess but i had a, i had some similarities in the sense that i was very angry at them when i sort of found out that they hadn't taken care of any of that mm -hmm. when it was too late and then i had to get visas again and it was this whole lengthy oh what there was like a time window that you well you i missed? turned 18 and i went to germany to study there yeah and we had been on visas here and I didn't know because growing up here, as you know, you kind of think like, oh, I'm American yeah. or like, OK, I was born somewhere else. I was a kid when we got here, but still. Um, so I thought I would go to Germany, study there, come back yeah. and just get a green card by showing them that I grew up here. Uh -huh. But that's not how it works. If you leave the country and your visa expires right yeah. then you're back to square one okay i didn't so, know that yeah. yeah so i went what, to what happened i went to a lawyer and he, i was like yeah i grew up here here's the student visa i had da, da, da. and i was like and i want to apply for a green card now and he said you can't get a green card at all like wow. you're not and i was like but i grew up here he's like it doesn't matter yeah. so um i had to get the artist visa the o1 artist mm. visa which yeah. is like very hard to get especially if you're in your early 20s and is that the one where you're not allowed to do a normal job? Yeah. Yes, and right. you have to prove that you're like an alien of extraordinary ability. <laughs> yeah, That's what yeah. it's called. So you have to like prove all this shit. How'd you prove that? Well, I um, you send the tape. <laughs> no, you have you have to hand in like it, it, in every category. It's different. So I was doing it for acting because at that time I was acting mostly, yeah. and um, so you have to hand in like box office receipts for movies you have to oh. that you've been in. You have to have letters of recommendation. You have to have uh, press about you. You yeah. know. Um, so and, and it's expensive too. these visas and paying for lawyers yes. and the forms you know. themselves have retarded fees, like insane, insane fees. insane insane yeah. so i i did that for years yeah until then i finally was able to be eligible for a green card then i had to wait another five years to yeah. be eligible to become a citizen so that's why it, but i was so angry at them yeah because i was like you the same as what you said you brought us here mm -hmm. and you didn't like figure out the immigration part of it right. that that we were kids yeah. so like we identify as 
people who live here and want to live here, you yeah, know? exactly. And during the pandemic, they couldn't come back because they didn't have green cards and they weren't letting people in for a while that didn't oh. have green cards, so they, we couldn't see. It was like, you know, just a mess. And yeah. um, so I get the anger, and it took me a long, like it took me, I, I think until like last year to not be angry anymore. <laughs> I was angry for a long time, you know? Yeah. Just because I was like, what the fuck, man? Like, how could you have not figured this out you know this is such a big thing right but it's hard um, it's immigration is such a like a, a lengthy unnecessarily complex thing to do i don't know if it's just america but i probably everywhere and so yeah to to, to even a, approach the mountain of the paperwork or whatever it is 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 always just um daunting so yeah, it's I, horrible. I understand from from the outsider. I understand why they drag their feet on it. As someone who them, himself did it, yeah, this is such insanely um, tedious. Well, and for them also, they they're like, oh, they have to pay taxes in Germany and here. Then I'm like, you don't oh, even yeah. make that much money. What tax? What amount of taxes are you so worried about? Like, mm -hmm. if you were millionaires, I, I would get it, but not even close. You right, know, right, right. But. Um, but yeah, it's difficult. Uh, but I think that, you know, yeah, in every country there's immigration is uh, tedious. I think though in this country, there's so many people that like fall through the cracks, you know, like like people like you that are on DACA that grew up here that have been here since they were one or two or a baby, mm -hmm. you know, and have never even been to the country. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't even speak the language mm -hmm. of the country that they're supposedly going to be deported to you know yeah, yeah and um and so i guess that it is this like crazy phenomenon that it seems unbelievable i think for people outside of this country that it you know do you know how many how many people are on daca lots like the company i work or? my day job the yeah. company i work at there's like i heard there's at least 500 people in the company in on wow. daca okay and in my particular location it was like at one point it was like 20 maybe like 50 people with it mm -hmm. and uh there's even like a, there was a big zoom call with all the daca people with uh the ceo of the company and stuff and it was like all the daca people and uh, yeah it's really good i'm very grateful for for that daca came to be and that's why you know i'm grateful for obama for coming right. in right you yeah, know absolutely and people you know even he may have bombed or whatever droned <laughs> droned two ten thousand more if i get to stay in the country. <laughs> um <laughs> what care. do you do you when you hear like how people talk about illegal or undocumented immigrants and um do you have like is there something that you want people to know do you know what i mean <sighs> I don't know. I think I think what you're saying, like the the kind of the if you if we picture the man in the uh, red hat kind of going get out, you know, we taking our jobs kind of guy like that kind yeah, of person. Right. It's uh, I think I th I think they they there there's this kind of it's weird the, the whole d debate of it is very complicated and it almost goes in circles and it's kind of annoying. Um, but the thing, the idea that this is America is the land that uh, is where their their home is. But if we dial back, then then uh, it's the native Native Americans that own this land, and then right. you know Americans kind of immigrate here. Um, and then, uh, but that argument doesn't matter to me. I'm uh, I think I just think very even selfishly, um, America is li literally the best country, um, even if uh, you rightfully were the home. Even if you were the first people on here, I would still find a way here and uh, and 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 live here because um, it's the best and it's my one life. So I, how, what you want matters less than what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so I would I would do it anyways. So I might not be the best person to ask. <laughs> I really, uh, uh, it's uh, it's gonna be me over you almost every time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that said, I've been performing more in these like in the, these places in the South mm -hmm. where it is conservative older people that have their opinions on it. I I I don't I don't I haven't personally met a person that's like like that. Although one time I was performing and I began the DACA joke that I tell, which is that I'm an illegal immigrant. It's like the first line. 
And then this guy goes, you know, you're in a far right conservative conservative town of uh, Saskatchewan or whatever. Which is ironic that he's saying a Native American name of the town too, <laughs> That's where true. he's from. Um, and uh, and that was probably my first experience of like, oh, okay, here's a person who's like openly, uh, r almost raising his hand and saying I'm against that. Mm. Um, and I don't, I don't have. Uh, I do believe that my way of uh, showing um, people different than me, the people that look different at me than me, that I am like them, is not necessarily to just kind of lay out DACA or immigration or or, or even kind of bash over their heads how we're all the same and da da da. I really just avoid that kind of stuff as much as I can. That's really the only thing I touch on about my illegal immigration stuff is that one joke and then the rest is i try to focus on just talking about who i am um very personal ugly things mm. that um are probably uncomfortable truths about how people how i feel and and uh stuff and i hope that these things will relate deeper than mm -hmm. than just being like hey we're all one blah 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 so uh, right. that's my that's at least that's the most effort that I'm giving in, mm. in as far as trying to bridge the bridge the gaps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was that did that sound profound and nice? Very profound, but it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, it makes sense. It, the it's like then I pull out my dick, uh, and then you pull out your dick and pee on everybody, and they're yeah, like, guess... "Oh yeah, we." And then the guy in the south is like, "Oh, we really are all the same." <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you as you're about to. Add no, no, to no, it. no, um, no. I think that yeah, that makes total sense to me. Uh, Peter, I always ask my guests um, if they grew up with like a saying or something from their country or culture that because I I think like sayings always say a lot about the mentality of like the culture of the people. Like German sayings, for example, there's a German saying that um, they say um, almost. They almost there is still off. Uh -huh. Like, if you like nearly missed, you are still off. Yeah, it's so German. Yeah, and like it's very like harsh. Per it's saying perfection, right? So, yeah, but like it's like so harsh. Like yeah. it's like, oh my god. Okay, you fucking you lost by a little bit. You still lost. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a very German way, like way to express mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Um, did you grow up with anything? Like that, um, Chinese. My dad has said many sayings, but you know, we had such a strange relationship that I mm. just none of them stuck because I didn't, <laughs> didn't like listening to him. <laughs> but I do maintain still uh, the idea of like the work ethic mm. is important. Um, I do think we're at a. Uh, this is probably true throughout the history of entertainment or any industry. There's a lot of people that complain about not having things. Mm complain about everyone around them and why they have things um and it's so annoying to me um and my dad would agree in the sense of like uh just ignore everyone else and just keep doing what you do and work hard mm. and that's all that matters it's like absolutely all that matters and so um so yeah that's 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 it and i do think that's very chinese mm -hmm. this idea of the the hard work and shutting up uh will pay off and mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's that's something that's stuck with me. All right. Work hard and shut up, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And now it's time for the witching hour of so the night. So many segments. I know. So many segments. So little time. Uh -huh. Now, uh, have you heard of the Proust questionnaire? Oh, what? The Proust, Proust. questionnaire? Proust. I know Proust is a writer. writer? <laughs> <laughs> German? Yes. No. Oh, okay. Proust. French. Proust. Le, 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 le. Sorry, there's a lot, a lot of French people talking. USTs in in German, right? Or USTs like ending words. Yeah, but this is O U S T. Okay, all right. And fair. that we don't have that in German. O U. Okay. No, not really. All right. Well, this is the poll questionnaire, so don't fucking worry about Proust. Okay, okay fuck right. that guy. All right. Stay in fucking France. It's good. I used to, right. I went good. I don't know anything about him, <laughs> and we're gonna continue on all right. that track. Are you ready, Peter Wong? Uh, yeah. Where did you grow up in Queens? What neighborhood? Flushing. Peter Wong of Flushing, Queens, by way of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the poll questionnaire? Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> yes. If you were president of the United States of America, what American food would you ban? 
What American food would I ban? Yeah. I do like a lot of American foods. Um, let me dig, uh, dig on deep. this one. Hmm. What American food would I ban? I mean, there's so much to choose from. Um, pretzel buns. Pretzel buns. Yeah. Interesting. I think, uh, huh. yeah, they're too dense for um, for burgers. Okay. Anyone, and uh, I've never seen someone this that is like a, a This is like kind of a stab at Germans, too. They made the pretzel bun? Pretzels come from Germany. I didn't say pretzels. Yeah, but the pretzel bun comes from pretzels. <laughs> yes, I know. But the pretzel, pretzels are good. <laughs> pretzels are great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you're really taking a stance on this. <laughs> I this love is, pretzels. Yeah. But German pretzels. Mm. See, What's this a, is a reason to get your citizenship and, and, and go abroad. For the pretzels? Yeah. I've always wanted to go to Germany. Yeah. I studied German for a couple of years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Aber mein Deutsches <gasps> Wow, that's good. Holy mm -hmm. shit, that yeah. was really good. Your pronunciation is great. Uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried. Ich habe uh, Deutsch studiert. Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah. I uh, love uh, sticking a finger in my butt. <laughs> no, he said, I study <laughs> German. Tracks. Sorry. Okay, anyways. Okay. Um, Pretzel buns. Final answer. So the German ones is that's not this is not the German one, right? Where yeah, this one. The pretzel. It ties and yes, twists. yes, yes. That's a German one. Oh yes, okay. that's very German. Yeah. The pretzel bun is a descendant of the pretzel. I know that, Lizzie. <laughs> they were like, we I can do think, other things with this dough. I didn't think the pretzel bun came first, and then they're like, let's invent the pretzel now. I, that I knew. Uh, okay. Um, All right, fine. Pretzel buns. You want them gone? Gone. We don't have really pretzel buns in Germany anyway. It, yes, exactly. It's a bastardization of yes, actually the pretzel. It is. So I'm actually on your side more than you think. Um, and if they're too dense for burgers, and I mean, anyone who ever orders them, I think they always regret it because it does. it's too much for it. It doesn't... Mm -hmm. It soak up juice quite the same as the other things. Mm -hmm. So, if you could deport one American person, who would you deport? <laughs> uh, the people want to know. I, I almost want to say someone. I really love chaos. So, um, uh, Brittany Griner. Whoa! Just to get her back out. <laughs> Holy shit! But not back to Russia. Back to Russia. Just to see. I have no dog in the fight. Oh no! Obviously, you just yeah. want people to go crazy. Yeah, and be I, upset. I love. I yeah, I like when uh when crazy sh yeah crazy stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's just very funny to me. Cool. Oh no, uh, Brittany Griner. What about Alex Jones? I think they should have swapped him for Brittany Griner. <laughs> give give the American citizen to Alex Jones to Russia? Yeah. And he should go to a Russian penal colony. That's what he deserves. Yeah. He deserves to go. And I don't believe in anybody getting what they deserve, but he deserves to go to a Russian penal colony. Sure. Yeah. You could deport him too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the, but the, if you deport him, like, no, I don't know if there's chaos that happens. No, there wouldn't be people, chaos. That's know. true. Yeah. So Brittany Griner would cause I like chaos. seeing uh, just, you know, like I like uh, reality TV dating shows. I like when people fight. Interesting. I love it. All right. Uh, are also a very New York thing. Yeah. <laughs> New Yorkers <laughs> love sitting back and watching people fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you could add one amendment to the Constitution, to the U.S. Constitution. Oh, really? What would you add? Huh. I do think there's a lot of such good things. Like the free speech thing is pretty, pretty important. Pretty obviously. sweet. Pretty sick. Uh, so yeah, the guy that said four different uh, slurs this pod probably yeah, I definitely feels <laughs> free speech is important. Um, how about um, I guess uh, the the what I don't even know how they word it. The what they just say like the right to something, right? The yeah. right to bear arms, like they say like mm -hmm. that, right? Um, the right to to fucking sh show your dick. Uh, <laughs> I think anytime. you have that right. I don't think so. No, isn't pub isn't de in public indecency or public exposure? Or oh, okay. So the right to public indecency. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. So in German, it's not a, a crime to flash uh, people in Germany. Uh, no, you can be naked. I don't think you can be naked in like office buildings all of a sudden but outside but like the autobahn or like the, the autobahn you can be naked people are going too fast that'd be a waste of time if you're standing on the autobahn naked <laughs> nobody's gonna see your dick or the bus or something that's yeah i don't think you can be naked on the bus okay. no 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 but you can be no. on the street but, but in the park on in a public park 
even if I've kids are around. Oh, yeah, especially if kids are around. <laughs> especially? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So oh, as yeah. a kid, you saw um, male genitalia. Well, around. I, oh, my God, I'll never. One of the things I'll never forget as an immigrant experience was when I was like nine or ten, like a few years after we'd moved here, being in the cafeteria and telling a story which involved my dad walking around naked but that wasn't the point of the story that yeah. was just like an aside uh -huh. and i was just, i was like and then my dad was there and he was naked and all the american girls were like ah! <laughs> ah! there was like a total meltdown <laughs> yeah. everybody had a meltdown i was like what 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 and that's when i learned that that's not a thing a here no no here yeah. yeah like you don't see your parents naked and i remember yeah. once i had a friend over larissa turkle taub and um, my mom, she she was peeing in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom with her, but my mom walked in and my mom like just thought it was normal because we were kids. She was peeing, she didn't care. She needed something from the bathroom. Yeah, She wasn't, she's not American. And this girl, again, like had a total meltdown. My mom was like, what is it? What is it? I was like, mom, get out, get out, get out. She was yeah. like, why? Oh my God, are you okay? I was like, you gotta get out. This is America. Yeah, yeah. You can't see anybody naked. That's so yeah, so... no, that's totally normal in Germany. Totally. That's great. Yeah. It is. I think so. Yeah. I think like there's people that like get like traumatized by like being flashed nudity or stuff. Yeah. Like oh, this guy flashed me on the parking lot or whatever. Or that's like a news story, you know. I mean, this might be insensitive, <laughs> but I'm like, you gotta get over it. It's you gotta so get better minor. problems. Yeah. <laughs> so minor. That's hilarious. But you know, um, maybe... two more questions. If you could make up a catchphrase for America, what would the catchphrase be? A catchphrase for America. Um, um, I would like to say, uh, I, you know, sometimes I say like, I say stupid things like, um, like, oh, that was a whole bag of jello beans. I'll say that. <laughs> like, it's, it's just say, same as can of worms. And I yeah. say, oh, that's a whole bag of jello beans. Um, so I, I throw that in there. I love that. The stupider, the better. Oh, that's a whole bag of jello beans. Yeah. That's the catchphrase. Yeah. I love that. Okay, Peter, this is the last question, probably the most important question that I ask people on this podcast. I want you to take this seriously, please. Okay. Peter Wong, do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? <laughs> <laughs> do I know how you can meet David Hasselhoff? Yeah. Uh, you have to have more. There's must be less degrees of separation. <laughs> Between you and David and me, it'd okay. be like um, just you know. so confidence. Is this uh, is this your is that one of your dreams of meeting David Hasselhoff? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a dream. Have you that, met him? No, okay. that I kind of entertain for entertainment purposes. Yes, I would. Yes, it is a dream, okay. but I'm also kind of scared because because then I've met him and then oh, like know. don't meet your heroes kind of right. thing. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah. I guess so. I yeah. I feel like. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he does book signings. <laughs> That's true. I'll just go to the Strand. He'll be walking around there. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Great he, advice. He's like huge in Germany. He doesn't right? write books. Yeah, he's huge in Germany. Yeah. He doesn't. I mean, I'm sure somebody's written a book for him. But oh, he's yeah. not like a book guy. It's not the first thing I associate with David. <laughs> he seems oh, yeah. like a... him and his books. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a meet and greet kind of guy. That's true. I agree with that. Yeah, he seems like a, a nudist. A nudist? <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It's, he All has right. been nude, right? He, I'm sure he has been, yeah. Okay. But um, listen, we have to wrap this up. Yes. Um, Peter Wong, where can people find you on social media, on uh, Instagram, TikTok, whatever? Okay. Uh, Instagram, Peter Wong Comedy. On YouTube, if you search Peter Wong, my stuff will pop up. Um, and that is it. <laughs> that is it go see peter he performs all over the city and obviously also in hardcore redneck uh conservative towns yes. exclusively outside of the city who cool, you know sometimes they're so good i might like i might i might like them over the right town the left <laughs> yeah, side exactly so. you might turn into one of them yeah uh, follow peter check out everything he does um peter thank you so much for thank coming you. on i could have talked to you for hours yeah uh, Thank you to everyone who 
uh, is listening listened. Thank you, Douchebag Steve and all the other supporters of this podcast. We love you so much. Thank you to Jamie, who's here today. Um, because my Jamie like this, you think? D- d- does Jamie Jamie's giving two thumbs up? Okay. Um, and yeah, if you like this podcast, come on, give us a little rating and a review on the old iTunes. It helps so much. Check out the Patreon. You can also watch these on the old YouTube if you're watching, then you know that already. Uh, if you like this, tell your friends. If you hated it, tell your enemies. Hug someone today. Be kind to immigrants. <laughs> and pull your penis out and pee somewhere. Just do it, even if you don't have one. Yes. Uh, highly encouraged. Thank you so much. I'm your host, Lizzie Poe. We love you. Goodbye. Uh, bye, everybody. If you like what you just heard, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, recommend to all your friends. And if you hated it, recommend it to your enemies. Thank you for listening to Immigrant Jam, the podcast with me, Lucy Pohl. Have a delicious and nutritious day.